Hey guys, welcome back to Paige in the Chapter, or welcome if you are new here. My name is Paige, and today it is time for my February TBR. What is it about January that makes it last so bloody long? Oh my god, it's been going on for forever, it feels like. Well, we are out of it now, and it is time for my February TBR. There's actually not a lot that I want to read right now, so I've kind of put together a list of guidelines, and I'll just pick and choose from this list, depending on the vibe. I didn't just want to, like, purely vibe, like I did in the month of January. I had no TBR at all for January, I just mood read. And whilst that was really freeing at first as we got towards the end of the month I just felt really slumpy had no kind of structure to my reading once I'd read the books that I like really wanted to read I just had no idea where to go next so I'm glad that I do TBRs we are now back into TBRs so whilst I'm still feeling a little bit mood readery I'm just kind of gonna pick and choose from this list you know it's a guideline and not a strict you have to read all of these times I have five books on this list. I can normally read about five books a month but February is obviously a shorter month and because I'm feeling a little bit slumpy I don't think that I'm gonna read all five but because it's just a here's some books you may want to read type of deal I'm not gonna be too disappointed about it. I'm vibing, I'm chilling, it's all Gucci in the hood over here. So if you guys like TBRs and wrap ups and you like what you have seen so far why not hit that big red subscribe button down below and stay tuned for future content. I upload twice a week on a Wednesday and a Friday so there is no shortage of bookish content here for you to enjoy and if you want to see more I have designated playlists for TBRs and wrap ups that you can go and watch if the mood strikes. So without further ado because my camera battery is dying let's get into my February TBR. So the first book that I would like to get to in the month of February is one that I have already started reading. I was looking for some one more book to read at the end of January but it just hasn't happened. So the first book is The Girl in the Tower by Catherine Arden and this is the sequel to The Bear and the Nightingale. It is the second book in the trilogy I want to say but I've been wrong about these things before. So in an effort to finish more series, make some progress on some series, this book is on the list and I have started it. And you know what? I'm only 20 pages in, I'm really not very far, but I'm enjoying it. And this book seems shorter than the last one. For a middle book in a fantasy trilogy, it's actually a really small book and that makes me feel a little better about it. So this is like 350 pages long, which is quite short for a fantasy book. They are normally over 400 pages, especially as you get further into the trilogy. So the tagline for this book is, for a young woman in medieval Russia, the choices are stark, marriage or a life in a convent. Vasya will choose a third way, magic. So if you were not aware, the first book, The Bear and the Nightingale, or the first book in the Winter Night trilogy, follows our main character Vasya, and she can see spirits and creatures that nobody else can. It's this dualism between paganism and religion and how these spirits are actually quite protective spirits or can be quite protective spirits, but with people turning more towards religion, these spirits aren't being worshipped anymore and something is being lost in that and it's about how religion in the wrong hands or being too susceptible to religion can lead you to be vulnerable to bigger demons and bigger evils that will take advantage of that trust and that desperation to believe you're speaking to a higher power. And I really love me like themes of religion in fantasy books. It's one of my favourite things to read. And so yeah, this book is the continuation of Asia's story as she is now in the city trying to protect the city from magical threats and human threats. I'm so excited to see where it goes and yeah, as I said, nice small easy book that I'm hoping to get read very very early in the month. And the next book that is an option for me to get to and this is the most option of them all because this is a non-fiction that I've already started and I think will kind of just be one that I pick up and like read stories from is The Penguin Book of Classical Myths by Jenny March. It's a very big book but I really love the way that it is written. If you like Stephen Fry's Greek works then you will probably really enjoy the way this is written and it is just a beautiful book. 
I really, really enjoy owning this book. So I don't want to commit to finishing it in the month of February, but if I'm in the mood for something non-fiction, if I just kind of want to move on a little bit, if I don't really know what to read, I've already started this one, so it doesn't seem so daunting, this is an option. And then again, in the interest of making some progress on some series, like I have been talking about being one of my big goals for this year, The Dragon Republic by R.F. Quang. This is the second book in the Poppy War trilogy and I am terrified to read this book. I've been putting it off for over a year since I read the Poppy War and I bought this book back in October. So I've been, I've owned it and been putting it off since October but I've been putting off buying it for well over a year now and I am genuinely terrified of this series. Now the Poppy War was beautifully written, a fantastically constructed fantasy but it got dark really quickly. This book is a continuation of that. I have only heard terrifying things about the rest of this series. Do I think my mental health can handle it? Probably not, but am I more in the mood for it now than I have ever been previously? Yes, like I have been a little tempted by this book, but it's absolutely freaking huge. I don't know how I'm going to read this in a month and still read the other things on my TBR. So like maybe this book just needs a whole month to itself because this book is 650 pages long. No one has the right to be writing a middle book that long, especially when middle bu books usually suck. I don't really know if I have high hopes for this book. Should I read it if I don't think I'm going to enjoy it? I don't know. That's going to have to be a debate that I have with myself throughout the month. I've just had a little, a little craving in my brain of like, hmm, maybe, maybe we're in the mood for the poppy war now. Maybe. So I'm going to add it to my TBR and just see what happens, you know? Maybe this is finally the month. So the poppy war is a very military war-based fantasy that's inspired by the Opium Wars in China. It follows our main character and she gets accepted to this very prestigious military school where they are taught powers and things like that. And the first half of the Poppy War, you kind of just think it's like your standard main character goes to a school where they're learning something type of book. And then the second half of the Poppy War just whacks you around the face with like real war and like war crimes. And so I'm absolutely terrified. I don't feel as anxious lately. I just feel more in the nicest way possible depressed. And depressed Paige wants to read depressing books, whereas anxious Paige likes to avoid any kind of triggers. We'll see which side of my mental illness wins out this month. <laughs> and so then to counteract the damage that will be done by the Dragon Republic, or we have The Lock-In by Phoebe Lockhurst. I received this book back in the summer, but I did not read it back in the summer. It's a very summery adult contemporary. I mean, you can kind of see just by the vibes of the book that it is like that. I haven't read it yet, to be honest. I didn't really want to read a book that seemed a little bit quarantine-y whilst we were still going through it. Oh my god, do you think anyone's gonna call a cocktail a quarantine-y? Just, I wasn't really in the mood for this over the summer. We were finally allowed out. I didn't really want to read about being locked in. A hilarious story of housemates and hangovers, friendship and dating, as Ellen, Alexa, Jack and Ben discover what the worst ever morning after the night before really looks like. And it has been quoted by Emma Gannon, who is the author of Olive, a five-star read, one of my favourite books of last year. Absolutely adore that book. And whilst it's not summer right now, the weather is really acting like it's spring. We've got that very, very sunny, yet still quite crisp weather. And it's kind of making my mood transition a little bit. So potentially, I could really be in the mood for this, and especially if I do manage to somehow read The Dragon Republic in 28 days. This could be, you know, like a good one to then move into to save my reading. And whilst I like to save the fun summary books for the summer, maybe the hack to like not getting so depressed in the winter is to read the summer books in the winter. Maybe. Maybe I've been going about this all wrong. So this is another potential option for the TBR. But again, this is kind of like the non-fiction book. If one of them had to go, 
I feel like this would be like maybe one of the first ones that I didn't pick up this month. And then the final book that I am putting on my TBR is another like lesser goal. Lesser enough that I haven't really spoken about it that much but I kind of just I'm in the mood to give it a go and like give a little bit of a push towards it this month. And so the book that is on my TBR is Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. It is once again one of my cloth-bound classics because if I'm gonna read a classic it's not gonna be one that I don't own. <laughs> so because I have all of these cloth-bound classics it's been a goal of mine to like slowly start reading through them. I did do pretty well at actually reading some classics last year. I read more classics than I ever had before, probably because I owned them in such stunning editions. I'd just like to give it slightly more of a push this year, so if I read one a month or have one on my TBR every other month that I am working towards. That will make me happy. So I've chosen Sense and Sensibility as this month's pick. I don't know why, it's just kind of the one that grabbed my attention, that drew me in. I haven't had too much luck with Jane Austen before. I'm not a huge fan. It was between Sense and Sensibility and Emma, so this one might get switched out for Emma, but I just felt like maybe I'd give this one a go. I'd heard really good things about this book. I think it's supposed to be quite a fun one, maybe quite an accessible one. I don't know, this is just the one that I picked. If you have any classic recommendations, the chances are that I already own the classic because these are double stacked. I have more than what you are seeing. So yeah, if you have any recommendations, for classics that you think I might enjoy, that are accepted, that are accessible, that are actually like fun to read, please leave them down in the comment section because I do really want to make progress on this goal, but classics really, really like scare me. So yeah, here is my TBR for the month of February. It's a nice short video for a nice short month, however, my TBR is a little daunting. I know that really there's only three of the five that I am absolutely committed to reading and that is The Girl in the Tower, The Dragon Republic and Sense and Sensibility. I know I said I wanted to take the pressure off but that doesn't mean that I don't have to challenge myself or never read big books because I want the pressure to be off. If you come to my February wrap up in a couple weeks time and there's only one or two books on it, you know why. <laughs> Thank you guys so so much for watching this video, I do hope that you enjoyed. If you did enjoy and you would like to see more from me then do feel free to hit that big red subscribe button down below and stay tuned for future content. I upload twice a week on a Wednesday and a Friday so there is no shortage of bookish content here for you to enjoy. You can also check me out on Instagram and Twitter at Page and Chapter if you want to see what I'm reading as I'm reading it what I'm reviewing it, as I'm reading it, if you even want to pick what I read next. So you just, you don't have to keep waiting monthly for TBRs and wrap-ups, you can see it in real time if you are interested. I hope you guys are having a fantastic week, you are enjoying everything you are reading and there are no reading slumps in your future, that is my sign to ward off the dreaded slump. And I will see you on a Friday for my next video. Bye guys.